When we look at the narrative that has driven our care in the United States and elsewhere over the past 30 years, it, it, it centers on this chemical imbalance theory of mental disorders. So the theory is that, say, depression is due to low, uh, too little serotonin in the brain, and that the drugs fix that serotonin, they restore it to a normal level, and this, therefore it's like insulin for diabetes. Now that is a metaphor. That is a story that tells of extraordinary progress. Think about it. You've identified the very molecule that causes depression or psychosis or, quote, ADHD, and you can fix it. So that's the story that we organized our care around, and you can find it was promoted by the American Psychiatric Association, and, and basically around the world eventually. And here's the amazing thing. It's not true. If you look at, say, for example, the low serotonin theory of depression, that depression is due to absence of normal activity of this uh, um, chemical messenger, that actually was sort of falling out of, that was a hypothesis raised in 1965, it was, began to be investigated in the 1970s, and even in the 1970s, researchers weren't finding it to be so. They weren't finding that people with depression had low serotonin. And as early as 1984, the NIMH said, listen, there's no sign that there's a lesion in the serotonergic system that's a, a, a primary cause of depression. In 1998, the American Psychiatric Association's own textbooks sort of made fun of this hypothesis. What they said is it came out of understanding of how the drugs act on the brain, they up serotonergic levels, and so we hypothesized that people with depression had low serotonin, but we didn't find it to be true. And it's sort of a silly uh, hypothesis in the first place because there's no reason that uh, the disease, quote, should be the opposite of the mechanism of action of the drug. And yet, and here's the betrayal at the heart of this. Even as science was telling us that it wasn't true, that American Psychiatric Association, together with the pharmaceutical industries, were telling us that's what they had found. That's the betrayal. And there's even an extra kicker here. They found, for example, that people with a depression didn't have low serotonin before they went on the drug, okay? Now you give them a drug that ups serotonergic activity. What does the brain do? Well, it tries to maintain a homeostatic equilibrium, its normal functioning. So it actually decreases its serotonergic activity, the physiology of its serotonergic system. So here's the irony of science into the low serotonin, the investigation of low serotonin theory of depression. They hypothesized that people with um, depression had low serotonin. They didn't find it to be so before you went on the drug. And then they found that the drugs induced the very pathology hypothesized to cause depression in the first place. Did we hear that story? We didn't. And so this is part of the problem, is that we've organized our care around a false narrative of science. And now let's go back to why would you see a rising disability rates? Well, one of the things here is, instead of the drugs being drugs that, medications that fix a pathology, what we've really learned is they create abnormalities in, 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 in neurotransmitter function. And as soon as you understand that science, it becomes fairly easy to understand why, uh, particularly over the long term, these drugs are not going to improve functioning. They're more likely to impair functioning and cause problems.